everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am doing a follow-up video, a part two, to another video I did last year that was underrated fantasy books recommended by you all. So what I did was I posted a question on my community tab a couple weeks ago asking you all to submit books that you just never see talked about, that you wish more people would talk about or wish more people would read and recommend because they're some of your all-time favorites or what have you. So a lot of you had such great recommendations. Thank you so much for sending those in. I wasn't able, unfortunately, to include all of your recommendations in this video, but because there are so many good ones, I'll probably do a part three to this in the future. Since you all seem to really like these types of videos, these all sound really good to me as well, so I wanted to share this list with you all just in case you're looking for some fresh new recommendations that you really haven't heard too much about in the community as of yet. So the first one that someone recommended was the Seven Waters series by Juliette Marillier, and this starts with The Daughter of the Forest. So it sounds like this one is more of a fantasy romance book, which I know is quite a popular subgenre for fantasy right now. There is a lot of great fantasy romance books out there, but I've honestly never heard of this one. It says the lovely Sorsha is the seventh child and only daughter of Lord Column of Seven Waters. Bereft of a mother, she is comforted by her her six brothers who love and protect her. Sorsha is the light in their lives. They are determined that she know only contentment. But Sorsha's joy is shattered when her father is bewitched by his new wife, an evil enchantress who binds her brother with a terrible spell, a spell which only Sorsha could lift by staying silent. If she speaks before she completes the quest set to her by the fair folk and their queen, the lady of the forest, she will lose her brothers forever. When Sorsha is kidnapped by the enemies of Seven Waters and taken to a foreign land, she is torn between the desire to save her beloved brothers in a love that comes only once. Sorsha despairs at ever being able to complete her task, but the magic of the fair folk know no boundaries, and love is the strongest magic of them all. This sounds like something that sounds like a very classic type of fairy tale, where you have the evil kind of stepmother, and you have the young woman who's kind of uh, set out to break this curse for her one true love. I love that type of stuff. So this sounds really, really fun. It looks like it was actually first published in 1999. So I bet just because it's older, it's not being talked about as much anymore. But this definitely sounds like a good romance recommendation for those of you who really enjoy a good romance in your fantasy books. The next series that was recommended was the Sun Eater series by Christopher Ruocchio, I think is how you pronounce that. Uh, and that starts with The Empire of Silence. So this is a actually a science fiction, more of a space opera type book. And I have seen a couple people talk about it. I know Books with Brittany. I will link her channel down below. She's fantastic. I think that she read this one and wasn't a huge fan of it, but it does have pretty good reviews on Goodreads. Not a whole lot though, so I definitely think that this one is underrated. It was not his war. On the wrong planet, at the right time, for the best reasons, Hadrian Marlowe started down a path that could only end in fire. The galaxy remembers remembers him as a hero, the man who burned every last alien from the sky. They remember him as a monster, the devil who destroyed a son, casually annihilating four billion human lives. What? <laughs> That's a lot. That caught me off guard. <laughs> But Hadrian was not a hero. He was not a monster. He was not even a soldier. This is so, like, dramatic. <laughs> Fleeing his father in a future as a torturer, Hadrian finds himself stranded on a strange backwater world. Forced to fight as a gladiator and into the intrigues of a foreign planetary court, he will find himself fight a war he did not start for an empire he does not loved against an enemy he will never understand. <laughs> this sounds very dramatic, but it also sounds just like a really epic 
quest with this character who sounds very morally gray. Sounds like they've had a very complicated past and now they're kind of a fish out of water in this new setting fighting for something they don't believe in. I really like those types of stories that focus a lot on the morality of the main character. So this sounds very epic in nature for sure and it does sound very intriguing. So if you have been wanting to check out more space operas that feel more like an epic fantasy fantasy in their atmosphere, this sounds like a good, good option. A lot of you commented this next one, um, and I have to agree, I don't see a whole lot of people talk about this author, even though I know this author is popular, especially in the fantasy genre, Terry Brooks. A lot of you commented about Terry Brooks and how he just doesn't get mentioned as much as you would like to see in the booktube community. Terry Brooks is, I think, the most famous for his Shannara trilogy, uh, starting with The Sword of Shannara. So that's the one I'll call out in this video. This one is a classic fantasy, first published in 1977. It says, living in peaceful Shady Vale, Shea knew little of the troubles that plagued the rest of the world. Then the giant forbidding Alanon revealed that the supposedly dead warlock lord was plotting to destroy the world. The soul weapon against this power of darkness was the sword of Shannara, which could only be used by a true heir of Shannara, Shea being the last of the bloodline upon whom all hope rested. So yeah, it sounds like very classic fantasy story, epic quest. I, I have heard um, a lot of people love Terry Brooks, but I do agree, I don't see him talked about a whole lot. And, and we tend to hear more about new releases in the community um, versus some of these backlist titles. So if you've been wanting to check out Terry Brooks, a lot of people recommend him. And I definitely need to do some Terry Brooks reading myself. The next series that was recommended was the Silo trilogy by Hugh Howey. This is starting with Wool, and I actually believe this was originally self-published and was then kind of picked up by a publisher. This one I have heard a little bit about, but not from this booktube community. I think I heard about it actually from just a friend totally outside of booktube, and it sounded really cool. So this one has been on my radar for a while, and I just need to get around to reading it. It says, thousands of them have lived underground. They've lived there so long, there are only legends about people living anywhere else. Such a life requires rules, strict rules. There are things that must not be discussed, like going outside. Never mention you might like going outside or you'll get what you wish for. Super vague description. I personally like that. I think it tells you a lot that this is going to be more of a thriller of a sci-fi novel, which I tend to really gravitate towards. I really like sci-fi thrillers. So this sounds like it's more of a post-apocalyptic type science fiction novel and series. So if you've been wanting to check out more sci-fi thrillers, I think that this one sounds like a really, really good one. And it's one that I definitely have had on my radar and would really like to check out soon. All right, the next one, <laughs> this was actually recommended by my good friend in the community, Alan, who just finished this series, uh, and he loved it so, so much. And I have to give it a call out because I really have only seen him talk about it before. And that is The Long Price Quartet by Daniel Abraham, starting with A Shadow in Summer. He definitely put this book on my radar. I definitely want to read it soon because of how much Alan loves this book. I'm going to link his review for it down below if you want to check out more of his thoughts. The synopsis is pretty long on Goodreads, so I'm just going to read you the first paragraph um, to give you an idea of what this one's about. It says, The city-state of Sarah Kett dominates the summer cities. Its wealth is beyond measure. Its port is open to all the merchants of the world, and its ruler, the Kai, commands forces to rival the gods. Commerce and trade fill the streets with a hundred languages and the coffers of the wealthy with jewels and gold. Any desire, however exotic or base, can be satisfied in its soft quarter. Blissfully ignorant of the forces that fuel their prosperity, the people live and work secure in the knowledge that their city is a bastion of progress in a harsh world. It would be a tragedy if it fell. Saraket is poised on the knife edge of disaster. 
So I feel like that's all you kind of need to know. It, it sounds like it's very, very political in nature. You know, Alan loves this so much, so definitely check out his review of it if you haven't already. I will definitely be checking out this series very, very soon. The next book I have to mention is The Legend of Drizzt by R.A. Salvatore, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, so I know R.A. Salvatore, actually I have one of his books. It is The uh, Child of a Mad God, and I definitely want to read this one first, but this sounded so, so good. And I know The Legend of Drizzt is kind of one of his older releases, one of his more classic backlist series. It was originally published in 1990, and it sounds like one of those just classic epic fantasy books. I've heard so, so much about this author. So it says, Drow Ranger Drizzt, first introduced in the Icewind Dale trilogy, quickly became one of the fantasy genre's standout characters. But Homeland first reveals the startling tale of how this one lone drow walked out of the shadowy depths of the Underdark, leaving behind a society of evil and a family who wants him dead. It is here that the story of this amazing dark elf truly began. So this one definitely sounds like a good one to check out if you've been wanting to look at more backlist releases and more by this particular author. The next book I have to talk about is The Empire Trilogy by Raymond E. Feist and Janny Wirtz, and this starts with The Daughter of the Empire. Another what sounds like classic fantasy book, first published in 1987. Uh, this one sounds like it's epic, high fantasy. It says, Magic and murder engulf the realm of Kelowan. Fierce warlords ignite a bitter blood feud to enslave the empire of Tsura Nuani. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. I'm going to put that word right here because I don't know how to say that. While in the opulent imperial courts, assassins and spymaster plot cunning and devious intrigues against the rightful heir. Now Mara, a young, untested ruling lady, is called upon to lead her people in a heroic struggle for survival. But first, she must rally an army of rebel warriors, form a pact with the alien Choja, and marry the son of a hated enemy. Only then can Mara face her most dangerous foe of all in his own impregnable stronghold. Epic tale of adventure and intrigue, daughter of the empire's fantasy of the highest order by two of the most talented writers in the field today. Well, say no more. That sounds very good. Filled with political fun. So if you've been wanting to check out more of those backlist titles, there is another one to try. The next recommendation I have is the Crown of Stars series by Kate Elliott. This starts with The King's Dragon, first published in 1997. Y'all really wanted to recommend the more backlist books for this video, but that's great because I do feel like we as the community focus a lot on new releases, so it's cool to hear about all of these backlist books as well. It says, The Kingdom of Wendar is in turmoil. King Henry still holds the crown, but his reign has long been contested by his sister Sibella, and there are many eager to flock to her banner. Internal conflict weakens Wendar's defenses, drawing raiders, human and inhuman, across its borders. Terrifying portents abound and dark spirits walk the land in broad daylight. Oh, I love the mention of dark spirits. Anytime there's like a spirit realm in a fantasy book, I tend to really, really enjoy that aspect of it. Suddenly, two innocents are thrust into the midst of the conflict. Elaine, a young man granted a vision by the Lady of the Battles, and Lyeth, a young woman with the power to change the course of history. Both must discover the truth about themselves before they can accept their fates. Very much a chosen one trope. I like it. For in a war where sorcery, not swords, may determine the final outcome, the price of failure may be more than their own lives. Very fun. So this definitely sounds like it has a ton of those classic fantasy tropes that I really, really tend to enjoy. Sorcery, Chosen One, love all that stuff. So this sounds like a really fun one to try if, again, you've been wanting to try some more classic fantasy. The next recommendation I have is The Moontide Quartet by David Hare, starting with Mage's Blood. This one says it is epic high fantasy, a little more recent. This one was published in 2012. 
It says, the moontide bridge lies deep below the sea, but every 12 years the tides sink and the bridge is revealed, its gates open for trade. The magi are hellbent on ruling this world and have led armies across the bridge on crusades of conquest. Now the moontide is almost here and the people of the east are ready to fight. That's all it says. So you don't get too, too much, but it definitely sounds like this is more of an epic type of military fantasy. I'm definitely here for that. So this one sounds really cool. Definitely one I want to check out. We have two more recommendations, so here we go. The second to last recommendation I have is the Obsidian Mountain series by Mercedes Lackey and James Mallory. This starts with The Outstretched Shadow. It is a little bit of an older fantasy book, but it does sound quite good. It says, Kellen, son of the Archmage, Ly oh my God, I don't know how to say this name. I'll put it on the screen. Lysalon? I don't know thought he knew the way the world worked. His father, leading the wise and benevolent Council of Mages, protected and guided the citizens of the Golden City of the Bells. Young mages in training, all men for women were unfit to practice magic, memorized the intricate details of high magic, and aspired to seats on the council. Then he found the forbidden books of wild magic, or did they find him? Ooh. The three slim volumes woke Kellen to the wide world outside the city's isolating walls. Their magic was not dead, strangled by rules and regulations. It felt like a living thing, guided by the hearts and minds of those who practiced it and benefit benefited from it. This is a really long synopsis, so that's all I'm going to read for now, but it does sound quite good. I really like the sound of it. I know that Mercedes Lackey is quite a popular author in the fantasy genre, so this sounds like a good place to maybe start. If you've read any Mercedes Lackey, do you think that this is a good starting place for her work? Um, it sounds like a fun time, so I definitely would love to check this one out as well. Last recommendation I have for you all is one I have heard of before um, because I have another book by this author. It is called the Draconis Memoria series, starting with The Waking Fire by Anthony Ryan. So I have Blood Song by Anthony Ryan, which I've heard is quite good, but this is his other series that I've also heard quite good things about. Definitely underrated in this community. It's a perfect read for fans of Wheel of Time and A Song of Ice and Fire. I feel like every blurb always says that, so <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But this one says, throughout the vast lands controlled by the Iron Ship Syndicate, nothing is more prized than the blood of drakes. Harvested from the veins of captive or hunted reds, greens, blues, and blacks, it can be distilled into elixirs that give fearsome powers to the rare men and women who have the ability to harness them known as the blood blessed that sounds like a really cool magic system already i really like hard magic systems in fantasy so that's already very intriguing to me but not many know the truth that the lines of drakes are weakening if they fail war with the neighboring corventine empire will follow swiftly. The syndicate's last hope resides in the whispers of the existence of another breed of drake, far more powerful than the rest, and the few who have been chosen by fate to seek it. This sounds like a really cool world setup already and a really cool magic system. I'm already intrigued and I've read that it has dragons in it. So if you are a huge fan of dragons in your fantasy books, it sounds like this is a really good recommendation to check out. I definitely know that I will be reading Anthony Ryan, um, starting with Blood Song. So if I really enjoy that series, I would love to check out this one as well. That was actually only a portion of the recommendations that you all submitted. So thank you again so much for those of you who commented on that community post with all of those recommendations. I will link all of the books down below so that you can go read the summaries or read more about them on your own if any of these really interested you. And definitely look out for part three that I will probably do uh, maybe down the line sometime soon. I definitely do want to cover a lot more of your recommendations that you submitted. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!